Hello. So, I have been demanded by a person who shall remain unnamed, uh, but whose name is not exactly, but similar to Saren Jasmine Saints, to record myself playing Kerbal Space Program and post it on YouTube, because apparently she'll watch it. So this is a test of that theory. I, uh, so, I have a wonderful modded game here. Uh, as per my testing, it requires about 20 gigabytes of RAM. Which is nice, because just earlier today I upgraded my computer to 32 instead of 16, so I can actually run this. Um, and we have a save game here with some custom difficulty options to make the game slightly harder than normal. We're playing career mode, and our save name is Karen2. Because Miss Saren uh, already had, a, there is already a save game named after her. So I can't reuse that. Um, I don't. I don't think there's a flag I want to use, right? Yeah, screw flags. Anyway, I hope this goes away. If not, I might uninstall it. Oh, thank you. Please go away. Please. What are you? Uh, okay. So uh, here we are, our wonderful Tier 0 Space Center. Or is this Tier 0 or Tier 1? What is it called? Okay, this is our wonderful Level 1 Space Center. Um, everything is so tiny. We have a little bit of money. We have absolutely nothing otherwise. So the first thing we're going to do... Well, okay, I guess... Quick run through of the buildings for Miss Saren, who may not remember how this game works. We have a runway. We have a hangar where we could build pr planes for the runway. We have an administration building that I don't like visiting. There is an astronaut complex for us to hire astronauts at. There is a research and development center for us to research and develop new stuff. There is a tracking station where we can track stuff. There is a launch pad where we can launch stuff, and there is a vehicle assembly building where we can assemble vehicles. But before we go to any of those, we're going to go to Mission Control where we accept contracts. Actually, we don't control any missions. So, here we have three contracts, and I am allowed to take, currently, because I have not upgraded the Mission Control Center, up to two of any kind. So, the three contracts are do some sort of science and launch a vehicle into the air and go suborbital. Suborbital, I'll show you in the tracking station in a second. So we're going to take these two, by the way. Suborbital. Shut up. Suborbital means we leave the ground, we go above the atmosphere, but we don't go into orbit around the planet. We just fall back. Go away. Um, oh yes, and here, since I am playing the newest Kerbal Space Program, I have four different sites. Woomerang, Desert, Kerbal Space Center, and Island. We're mostly going to be playing Kerbal Space Center, but we might visit the other ones. Um, mostly because Kerbal Space Center is conveniently on the equator, which is where I want to be for most flights. So anyway... We are going to build a wonderful little thing to complete the first contract so that I can see what the next contract after that is. And as you might expect, this is going to be the absolute worst uh, space launch anybody has ever conducted in history. Because it's not going to go to space. It's pretty crappy, right? Uh... I could tune that better, but I'm going to. Oops. Okay. Our pilot's gonna be Jebediah, by the way. Actually, no. Screw Jebediah. Let's fly Valentina. 
she's a girl. She's actually my only girl, so. Uh, oops. Guess I don't get to edit this. But, uh, I will make this... I can't make that bigger. So, I guess, okay. I'll turn this back on. Just on the off chance that my parachute isn't big enough so I don't kill poor Val on her first flight. And we're just gonna go launch the great untitled spacecraft, because nobody's ever gonna fly this again. So if you remember, our contracts were do some science, launch a mission, and get suborbital. We're not gonna get suborbital, but we can do some science. Now here's... Why are you back? Okay, I recorded it. You all saw it. Valentina was supposed to be sitting in that chair. Jeb is just a freaking glory hound. Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, nobody cares. They're both pilots. I'm not sexist. Uh, so, this is one of my many mods. And this is Science Alert. So it tells us what science I haven't collected yet, which is helpful. Right now it says we can do a crew report and an EVA report. And notably, those are both science that we don't have to go anywhere to do. So we're just going to do this crew report. We can collect this EVA report, I guess. Yes, a space, a space suit was not necessary to get to the launch pad. Thank you. Um, I hate this capsule so much. So you have to climb up it to board it. And now, uh, world's first, we have performed an EVA test. Yes, we have tested that you can in fact get out of a spacecraft after you're already in a spacecraft. Aren't you guys so proud of me? So here we are going to perform our wonderful little um, launcher vessel into the air. There you go, we went into the air. Not very far. We're probably going to land somewhere unfortunate. Oh, no, we're not. I was worried we were going to hit the VAB for a second there. But now we have our parachute out. And can we land with the booster attached? Yes, we can. There we go. And through the wonderful power of this flight, I have now successfully uh, done something. Don't really know what that is, but hey. So, yeah, I think I need to... My mod set... This is the first time I've loaded this mod setup, if I didn't make this obvious, so I'm probably going to end up changing some things, like I'm going to see if I can make these ground textures a little bit... Um, not 180p. But anyway, I'm just going to speed up physics here for a second so we can get close to the ground. Well, okay, our booster blew up because, like I was worried about, the parachute wasn't strong enough, but Jeb lived. And hey, we can do more science over here! Wow, that's crazy! Look at that. Um, I can't get in with this report, actually, because it'll overwrite the one I already have, so... I have to recover Jeb and his capsule separately. Oh no. And look at that. We just did a contract. We made a bunch of money. We made a bunch of science. Mission accomplished, right? Look at all of these uh, milestones that we got. And, uh, yeah, this still says... Hello, we did this. Okay, we have officially encountered a bug, I think. Because it thinks we have not recovered or launched a vessel. But anyway, we can do that one again, I guess. But now we can unlock some science. For reals, this time. And why is that there? Whatever. Um, so here, we could take one of these two sciences. This is our wonderful, heavily modded tech tree that goes from unlocking the concept of a fin to unlocking antimatter engines. So, yeah, it's a little bit big. 
But we have two choices right now. We have 11 science, we can choose basic rocketry or engineering. Both of them are five science, so we could get both. Rocketry gives us an upper stage engine, a lower stage engine, a lower stage engine that can gimbal so that it can control the vessel, a bigger solid fuel booster, and the fuel tank. Engineering gives us a light, a manual, a wrench, a couple antennas. There you go. Three antennas, a decoupler to separate stages, and a thermometer. I want to do this because it will give me the thermometer. And that might seem stupid because obviously the engines are going to be more useful, but the thermometer gives science. Which means that we can do different science. And as you can see, again, we have a lot of science to do. So the thing is now, what do we go for next? Because we could either just get basic rocketry now and keep going towards building bigger vehicles, even though the first thing I did with the last one was get rid of all the fuel. Or we can try to go for stability, which again, I think this just lets us build bigger vehicles. This is radial decouplers so that we can put things on the side of our rocket. Wow. Or we could go for survivability, which actually sounds kind of important. So this has landing legs and chutes. And by the way, I haven't done a save from scratch in years. So I am literally learning this with you. But this is kind of why I'm leaning in this direction is, well, A, it gives us lots of parachutes. So maybe I can not crash. It gives us some life support stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, this is not base game, by the way. This is life support uh, mod because it seems kind of silly that you can launch a Kerbal without food, water, or air on a mission for 60 years, and they come back perfectly fine. And with this mod, you can do, still do that as long as you send them 60 years worth of food, air, or water, and, the or, and or the appropriate means to get them, and also some storage for their waste, or a way to dump it overboard. Uh, but anyway, like landing legs, okay, those might be kind of useful. Radial shoots would be helpful to recover our boosters, which would be nice because that would give us monies. Um, okay, these are not called monies. These are actually called spesos, as in pesos with an S at the beginning. Think about that one for a second. Um, heat shields would be good, but we don't need these until we're already going into orbit, which we won't be doing for a bit. And service bays, I mean, putting stuff inside of the service bay would be nice, mostly if we were going to spend a long time in space. So again, none of this is really that useful because a capsule can do, I think, two days without additional supplies. But a barometer gives science. Light bulb. So we're going to go for survivability, and we need another... 9.1 science, I guess. And we are going to get that science by launching this thing again. Remember when I said we were never going to launch this again? I apparently lied. Take that. Um, but we are going to... I'm going to change this up a little bit so that we can take it a little bit further. So I've doubled the fuel. I changed the thrust profile. Uh... Yeah, I guess. So that it burns a little bit longer, but it starts out stronger than the default is what I'm reading here. But basically my goal is, and I'm reducing the throttle to get this, my goal is that we leave the ground fairly sedately and we can keep burning for a good while. And that lets us go further. Um, but to do this, we need some sort of fin. And the reason why we need some sort of fin is if we don't have a fin, we're going to flop over like we did last time. And I would like to avoid that if we can. Um, I don't know if this actually has a command wheel. Does it? it might not have a command wheel. That actually might be why. Yeah. Should I be using this? Don't mind me reading stuff. Okay, you know what? Let's do that. Yeah. So screw what I just said. 
We're switching to this thing, which is bigger, but more importantly, it has a reaction wheel. Um, a reaction wheel, and I may or may not edit a longer description of this or record a longer description if someone's interested. The second one sounds more fun. But a reaction wheel is basically a device that lets you turn electricity into angular momentum. So, you use power to spin. Isn't that great? Um, and I want that so that I can actually control this thing. Uh, that's not the right size, is it? It is the right size. Okay. I'm putting that back again for the same reason as last time. I need to fix my stages. Always check your stages. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, I don't think I can edit this, which is unfortunate because I would really like to edit this and make it bigger so I can land it with this booster, but I can't do that until I unlock action groups, apparently. Which sucks. Um, but anyway, let's just do this. And honestly, with this, we could probably get suborbital, but I want to kind of farm some contracts first. Because as soon as we go suborbital, we're not going to get any contracts for doing less than suborbital, or any world records, at least. And I want some world records. So... Uh, this time, if you would kindly get off and let Val do something. Thank you. Um, and now, our responsibility is to go somewhere further. And before we do that, uh, somebody is going to yell at me and say, Ryan, you moron, you forgot the thermometer. To which my answer is, yes, I did forget the thermometer, and that's why I'm going to go back. Isn't this so much fun? Aren't you guys glad that you came to watch? All one person who's ever going to see this. Um, actually, okay, so we could have done this before, but... This looks really stupid. I have no idea if this is a good idea. I hope it is. But... There we go. That is, this is our wonderful little, um, contraption for doing science. Do I need this? Why do I have this? I already have... It's already here, I think. Did it? Do not want to save this. I am ashamed of it. Um, so let's launch it. Now that I have remembered that I can actually put science parts on my science farming vessel. Um, yeah. So... If I had the technology we're going for, you can see them all blinking because we can do the science. Isn't that nice? I could press this button, but unfortunately that's not going to help me. So, I want to do science in the air this time. So, I'm going to light it, and I am going to try to go kind of southwards or maybe northwards. No. You know what, let's keep going west. I don't want to go east, because east lands us in the water. And we're going to spend a lot of time in the water, and we can collect data from the water some other time, easily. I want to land on some other part of the space center, or if we can do it somewhere over past the edge of the space center, where there's grassland. I know it's a little bit hard to see with this visual mod, but there's this uh, shelf here. That's the end of the grounds of the Kerbal Space Center and the beginning of some grasslands. So we can collect more science there. And with that addendum... Look at that. See how much slower that is? And now we can basically just go and collect all sorts of stuff... ...while I'm flying us slowly in the general direction of that way. Mystery goo, I did that, I did... We're going to die. Um, okay. We... No. Okay, I get it. Got that whole launch out. 
Um, see, this boost, this sucks. Who built this? The rest starts. Ah, okay, so our problem was that the thrust on the SRB decayed too far. And after it had decayed, it didn't provide enough thrust to keep us in the air, and I didn't notice because I was doing science. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to switch the thrust profile, which makes it uh, spike and thrust later. I'm going to check this button so that we look at atmospheric thrust instead of vacuum thrust, which was a stupid mistake on my part. And yeah, later on in the game, I'm going to stop doing this thing where I revert after I make a stupid mistake, and we're just going to live with it. Right now, as you can see, I'm being really lazy about my vehicle design. So I have no objections to doing this, because let's be realistic, if this was an actual space program, somebody would have attached this thermometer to a plane. But we unlock planes after rockets, for some reason in this game. So this is basically just us speedrunning through the boring part, but we don't have anything. And if you have a problem with that, you can feel free to go away. Because you're probably not even here to begin with. So, okay, we're back. We're doing the exact same thing again. I'm collecting uh, in-flight data first. Because it is realistically more important. And, okay, we lost that, we can use this. Because data we collect in flight uh, has more science to it. Uh, the way that works behind the scenes is there is a multiplier based on your situation for um, how much science you get. So on the surface of Kerbin, it might be like 50%, and while you're in the air, it might be three quarters or something like that. But the basic way it works is that each experiment gives a certain amount of science based multiplied by the situation you're in and the uh, planet you're near. So anyway, we've done all of our science for flight, including this one we can only run run once. That's a mystery goo? Oops. Okay, so these two are actually the same, so I wasted one. Um, I thought that was a materials bay. Darn, I would have run out on the launch pad. But anyway, we also ran our crew report. And now that we're about to land, once we've landed, we can collect the rest of the science. Brilliant. And now we're somewhere slightly different. We're on the shores. More science to be had everywhere. Wonderful. Look at that. Now we've completed the contract. I'm guessing that it didn't say so, but we needed to collect science while flying to complete this. The more you know, huh? And we've broken a record, because nobody in history has ever gone one kilometer away. Nobody in history has ever gone from over there to over here. Then how did these people get to the space center or build the runway that's almost that long? Don't, don't ask questions. Just accept it for how it is. Look at that. This time we've got 27 signs. Isn't that amazing? And yeah, you can see the one mystery goo that I missed. But uh, this is what I was talking about is the mystery goo that was collected while flying is worth 0.7, therefore it's worth 9.1 science. And doing it while you're landed is worth 0.3, so you get 3.9 science. Amazing. So anyway, got money, Val's back, got tons of science.
Oh. But some... Thank you. The default comparison on this parachute is such that we can't actually get off. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Why is, why is it configured that way?